Uh, should we play some more music then? Let's do it. I think we also, yeah. A song all about Carol, Don't Stop from Fleetwood Mac. this press conference in English. I think we all can understand it and should it lead to any um, difficulty or questions, whatever, feel free to come over to us and ask us anything you'd like to know. Uh, and this all does uh, justice to the, hello, to the pan-European uh, character of, the, of this, uh, this station. Unfortunately, our station manager, Peter Moore, is still stuck in traffic. This is why we are slightly late, my excuses for that. It's, uh, he's on the way from the airport, skip hall to here, and he's just been held up. Held up. So he, he might come in any minute, and he might come in after midday, which would be <laughs> a little bit too late for us, but we'll have to live with that. The schedule of this, uh, this small meeting is that after my hopefully short introduction, I will uh, pass on the microphone to Adrian next to me. He's our webmaster. He's going to tell you all the little secrets about the webcasting and how it all got to what it is now and what we hope it to be in the very near future. Today we also present the uh, newest video. In the last five years we have been uh, making video shots on every RSL, that's the limited uh, restricted license that we have, licenses that we had, and we've added it together and uh, made a one hour video of it and the official presentation is today. And if Peter Moore is not here in time, I will ask uh, Colin Turner to uh, represent the, uh, the organisation and just take it on behalf of Peter Moore. I have noticed, you see. 
It's obvious that um, everything we say might not answer all your questions. In fact, it might even lead to the fact that you walk out even more puzzled than you were when you came in. But we will be here all afternoon until five, and any one of us wearing a badge is uh, willing to, to talk to you about anything and everything you need to know, want to know, just ask. We'll sit down and tell you all about it. Well, if, it's, if everything went the way it had to go, you all uh, got a cup of coffee and something to go with that. And you also been offered a press folder. In the press folder is uh, information about the internet, information about the satellite. We added uh, a few things like a sticker and a booklet that tells about it, tells uh, about all of it. Um, if you sit down and read it through and you run into questions just like this press conference, just come to us and we'll answer everything, all questions and everything you need to know. If um, you want to have very specific questions to either Peter Moore if he comes in on time or uh, Adrian next to me about webcasting, uh, it might be sensible just to save the question until we've finished the official part. Well, so much for the schedule. Um, Radio Caroline's history counts over 36 years. Um, many events, times, moments have been celebrated or commemorated more often than we care to remember. Commemorated if it was dramatic and sad and celebrated if it was something that we were very happy about. And I think the commemoration was more often than the celebration. But we have plans to change that for the better now. Uh, it's even so, if you try to find pieces of Radio Caroline's history, that have not been taped, filmed, recorded, written about, or photographed. Well, if you find pieces of that history, it's probably not worthwhile uh, saving it. I think it's the history, the radio station with the history that's got about everything written down. And uh, so, besides the fact that this history has been recorded, sorry, I misread. Um, one of these special events. Yes, that's all I wanted to say. One of these special events, these special dates, is August 19th. And yes, that's the date of today. And this is uh, what it's all about today. Today and further on. We do not deny our history, but um, August 19th, 11 years ago, or August 19th, 17 years ago, or even August 19th, over, the, over the three years to come. It's not important, it is today. Today we are broadcasting officially via the internet, worldwide, and today we are once again, for the first time in 11 years, blowing over all Europe on medium wave, and basically that's the, the, the medium that we think we belong. It's a new chapter in our history. As far as the internet, uh, Broadcasting, the webcasting is concerned, it enables us to uh, finalize the process of finally getting to a radio station 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It took a long time, we had the satellite and we couldn't just fill all the time, and now we have the, the internet and we can. This means um, uh, that we've complete, uh, accomplished that, that we uh, can transfer the signal very easily anywhere we want to like a cable network, like a transmitter on AM, like we do today. Um, so beside the potential uh, growth of the, uh, the amount of people that are able to listen to us, we just solve this very important logistic problem of transporting a signal. Nothing happens uh, without a reason. And with this uh, official kickoff of the webcasting, combined with the use of 1296, we hope to have given everyone the proof that we are alive and kicking. And this in contrast of what a lot of people thought. A lot of phone calls came in the last few weeks. And we know about the people that have been following us for the last 36 years, and they know everything, anything, and I can't tell, can't tell them anything new, because they know better than we do. But there is this huge amount of people that lost track of us 10 years ago. And they phoned in and they said, are you still there? 
And this is what we were looking for, the, the, the public that's there, and they are now starting to listen. Unfortunately, tonight, 1296 is going to be switched off, and we hope that today might lead to a solution that we can switch it on in the very near future. We need, and what else is new, we need money, we need substantial money, and I'm not going to tell people, I've been asked this this week many times, I'm not going to tell people that, we, uh, that they can help getting us on the 1296 on a permanent basis by becoming a supporter, because that would not be fair. Being a supporter, is, it helps, but it does not make the difference on the 1296. We're talking about huge money, it's at least a million guilders a year we need, and that is an awful lot of money. But still, some, uh, listening to Gertie Carroll on 1296 like we do today, it, it tastes, it tastes like more. We want more, and uh, we'd like anyone to help us uh, invest, advertise, or help in any other way. For now, today is important. I mean, let's enjoy today, and uh, let's enjoy August 19th of the year 2000. This is because yesterday is history. Tomorrow is still a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. I'm passing on the microphone to Adrian, who's going to tell you something about the webcasting. Thank you. Thank you, Sitsa. Uh, as Sitsa told you, I'm Adrian. I'm responsible for technical affairs within the Dutch Airlines Board Group. And um, for the last six months, I guess, most part of the things that I did was making sure that Radio Airlines Board Group uh, did have its outputs on, on the internet, by means of its own website, uh, which was the main goal that we uh, tried to make possible when we started off early this year. Our website was launched on March 17th and uh, although at that time very small, it was an instant hit. Uh, there were other websites concerning Radio Caroline. Of course there's the official website in England, so radiocaroline.co.uk. There is Martin van der Ven's website, two of those, of those, the offshore radio website and uh, later on also the caroline.de website. But there was no special output for Holland and there are a lot of fans in Holland Radio Caroline. So what we thought would be necessary is to have a Dutch website concerning all things running now on Radio Caroline. Of course we do have our history on it, there are fragments on it from uh, from the past, from 69, from 64 until uh, 89 I guess. But our main goal with the Dutch website is to um, tell people what Radio Caroline is now. But most of, the, most of the information that is on the website is about the last two years of Radio Caroline. After we launched the website, uh, Cisa and I had our little chat and we came up with the idea to uh, relay the Easter weekend broadcast from Radio Caroline. As you all know, the Easter weekend is very special in Radio Caroline's history because that's when we, when we started broadcasting. So every Easter, as long as we are on the air, the birthday of Radio Caroline is celebrated. And the idea was just to have a one-off. Just the Easter weekend and after that we would stop. We did a small test the weekend before, and thanks to uh, all the DJs on board on, on, uh, in Maidstone uh, who mentioned on the radio that uh, there was an outlet on the internet. During the fir that first test weekend, we had 400 listeners, and we were quite overwhelmed with that because we hadn't thought of it being a test transmission. The weekend later, <coughs> the real Easter weekend, uh, the success was even bigger. Over almost 1,500 people in two, in two days uh, tuned in to the broadcast on the internet. And of course, that number was terrific, but the lots of emails and entries in our guestbook that we received was even more impressive. There were loads and loads of emails 
asking us to please continue with the webcast because not everybody has a satellite dish. Or even if they have, most of them have a digital receiver, not an analog receiver. So even if they have a dish, they can't listen to Caroline. So we were uh, facing a problem then because we announced it to be a one-off. Um, but soon after the Easter weekend, she and I decided that, uh, that we, we didn't have a choice really than to continue the webcast. And uh, we did until now. But we made sure that everybody knew that it was in a test phase. We have been off occasional in the weekend due to technical problems, due to uh, failures, because it's a new medium which we have to learn to, to handle. But until now, uh, well, I think it, it went quite well, and we thought this would be a nice occasion to present the webcast as one of the official outputs of Radio Cowboy. So starting today, the webcast is official and will be on seven times 24 hours. Uh, if uh, we don't have any breakdowns of, of computers and uh, problems with the internet, that is of course. Um, it's not only that we are now launching the official webcasts because what's new, we have been there since uh, the Easter weekend, we did our broadcasts, we did our relaying of the satellite programs. Um, just telling you that from now on it's official, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, it's a little, you know, we, we should add something to it. So we thought um, there are a lot of gaps in the weekend program of Radio Caroline between 12 a.m. Uh, 12 midnight and 9 a.m. in the morning, that is uh, for European time. There is no output because Caroline was broadcast and we did a relay of the complete weekend, so there was no output on the internet either. We invested in some hard and software and uh, we came up with a system where we can fill up those nights partly with non stop programs, non stop music, album tracks, and classic rock as you are used to, to hear on Radio Caroline. Uh, partly with uh, pre-recorded programs. And because of this extension of broadcast time, um, we uh, were able to let some former DJs of Radio Caroline rejoin the crew. And I'm very proud that I can announce to you that starting this weekend, DJs like Johnny Reese and Gilda Jean will be back on the, on the internet. Um, this evening, Saturday evening, 19th of August at 10 o'clock, the first three hours of Johnny Reese's uh, program will be transmitted on the internet. So we don't relay the uh, Roy Masters program. We'll stop with the satellite service at 10 o'clock and then we will go with uh, our own uh, Johnny Reese program. Then from 1 o'clock at night until 6 o'clock in the morning, there will be uh, non stop music, album tracks, and classic rock. And from 6 from 5 until 8, there will be a special internet program which is recorded by Dave Foster. Um, so, of course, it's very nice to have uh, Reesley back and have the other Jean back, uh, but there have been other DJs who said they very much liked the idea, and uh, hopefully, in the near future, there will be more DJs joining the internet service of Radio Caroline. That would be very a very good thing to happen. We really do believe in internet broadcasting. Um, back in 1964, when Radio Caroline started, there were no alternatives. There was only a terrestrial transmitter. And even in 83, when the uh, Rossby Ranch appeared on the southeast coast of England, uh, there were no other alternatives. Today, there are. There is satellite on which you are. Uh, for almost two years now, I guess. Uh, and there's internet. And although they are both in its development, we really think that it's a very important outlet for Radio Caroline. And the uh, emails that we have received until now prove that we have lots of emails from Australia, from uh, Aust yeah, Australia. We had emails from South Africa. We had emails from Canada, from the United States. All over the world, people are listening to Radio Caroline now, which is, of course, great. 
Um, that's why we think it's very important, as is satellite broadcasting. We think also on satellite that it won't be very long that you can receive satellite programs with, a, uh, with equipment which doesn't need a dish anymore. GPS, Global Positioning System, is a positioning system that makes use of satellites, but you don't have to wear a dish for it. You only have one small part of equipment with you where, where you can see exactly uh, the, the coordinates that you are on. If that is possible with such a small piece of equipment, that should be possible in the near future with radio broadcast. So probably there will be something like a uh, PRS, a portable receiver system, or portable satellite receiver, PSR, uh, which you can take with you uh, to listen to whatever comes from space, from satellites. I don't think that will be very long, perhaps five or six years, and it will be there. I'm quite confident of that. Until then, we'll have to stuck on satellite as we do it now, which has been received by, uh, by satellite dishes. And we will be on the internet, seven times 24 hours, hopefully. In the weekends, with the satellite service and the new programs that will be recorded especially for the internet, and that's 15 hours to start with, six hours Johnny Reese, six hours Dave Foster, three hours Gilbert G. So that's quite substantial. Hopefully with more programs. Throughout the week we will keep on um, playing, broadcasting earlier uh, programs that have been transmitted via the, via the satellite service. But hopefully we can increase broadcasting so that we can uh, get rid of all the replays and have all new programs in. There will be one other change in the next weeks or months to come. Um, until now, we have broadcasted programs via the internet that can be received with a uh, not too fast modem. 33K6 was the minimum modem you need to uh, listen to Radio Caroline. That has its um, impact on the quality of the signal that you are broadcasting on the internet. In the very near future, we will be broadcasting a second output, a high quality output, which can only be received if you have ISDN or a cable model, which is in FM stereo quality. We did a test with that uh, five or six weeks ago, I guess. Uh, it sounded really good, but you do have to have an ISDN or a, a cable modem. We did try it with a 65K modem, and it wasn't enough. There was a lot of dropouts in that signal. It is coming in the next well, weeks or months to come. Depends on uh, how fast the bandwidth at the office that we are now broadcasting from gets increased. Um, also on the internet, uh, things happen very fast. Uh, quite recently I saw an article from a company in America which brings out internet radios special piece of equipment which is only which can only be used to receive internet broadcasts. Um, they are not in Europe or as far as I know yet, but they are coming and you can make very sure of it that we will be on every one of those that comes from America to here. We have contact with the companies, they are all uh, pre-programming the Caroline website output on, uh, on their radio systems and we will definitely be on all of them. Uh, I think that's it. If anybody has questions about the internet output or other things that, that, that may be possible by, uh, via the internet, um, there is a possibility to ask some questions after all the presentations have done. A uh, quarter of an hour with all questions that I would be most happy to answer the questions if I can, of course. So thank you. That's uh, about the internet. Back to seats, I guess. <clears throat> well, I do hope that Peter Moore's plane is faster than his car is, because he's not here yet. And it's very unfortunate. I think if his plane was as fast as his car, he didn't even get airborne. But then again, we, uh, we hope he's going to get in any minute now, and you will be able to sit down with him and ask him what his thoughts and ideas were. We are very, very sorry, but everything very strictly organized. It's just some things that you can't do anything about, and it's traffic jams. So he is on the way.
Well, what is Caroline without at least one piece of music? So I'm looking at the master of ceremony, and there. Would you please fire up? Oh, yeah. Look at this. This song seems very appropriate for presenting a new video, because this is a nice song for the bubbles. But the lyrics are wrong. The, the word lyrics say, video killed the radio star. Well, we are here today in 1296 to prove that we have not been killed at all. <laughs> and there we <it> go. <laughs> well, this is Mr. Peter, Mr. Peter Moore. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry about that. Good morning. Hello. Yeah, you went to the book first, you see, You went to the book first. Well, do you mind stepping forward? We've decided to... release least start with the... Uh, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank um, I was supposed to uh, present the video, well I will do so, it's just the order of the presentation is slightly changing now. <laughs> but that doesn't take away the importance of it. Radio Caroline has not been broadcasting from the North Sea since 1991 when we were grounded. Ever since, um, we have been on the air for a short period of time, because in the UK you've got this phenomenon called the RSL. I mentioned it before. It's a restricted license which enables us to at least broadcast for a period of four weeks. Uh, we usually did that from the Rotary Bench. It was low power, unfortunately, nothing like we are today. You have to listen. Well, you have to, because you can't hear anything else. Yeah? <laughs> but in these RSLs, uh, during that month of RSL, you sort of recreated uh, the situation you had when we were broadcasting from the high seas. During the last five years, we have been, just for the fun, making all kinds of video uh, recordings. Not intending to do anything with it, just for fun. But in the end, we had three and a half hours, giving a quite clear view on how life is on these RSLs. And so Adrian sat down behind his computer and started editing, 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 until we ended up with a one hour video, which is officially present, presented today. And if I hand it over to you, someone upstairs is going to press a button oh. and it will come up on the screen. Okay, well, let's go. I hear something moving. The, it's the one screen behind the bar. Yes, there is something coming. There we are. It's available starting off now, and um, you'll be having the chance to look at it all day because we'll be continuously playing all afternoon. Well, um, we did change the order, but I would like to give you a couple of saying a few words. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. I will just move this one so you, you want to oh, sit down. Good morning. Um, as you can see, I've only just arrived, and I thought I could sit down and make a few notes about um, what to say, but that hasn't happened, so <laughs> as usual, I'll have to make it up as I go along. Um, I left my home about half past four this morning and started to listen to Radio Caroline at five o'clock, driving towards the airport in, um, from London, and uh, as soon as we got off the aircraft, uh, in Amsterdam, we turned the radio back on, and the signal is, is excellent. Um, and listening to the radio on the way here, I've heard other reports from as far away as Luxembourg. So obviously the 1296 transmitter is doing just a good job as the BBC intended it to do, because it was their transmitter once. Um, Caroline has got an astonishing history, um, and that will never change, because of course it is just that, it's a history. It happened years ago, it's set in stone, we can't live on our memories forever. Certainly we've um, used the nostalgia of previous years of Caroline to keep us going uh, during the 90s, certainly at the time when things were very bad indeed. Um, in 1991 when the ship was in Dover Harbour 
and we had literally no money. Uh, the ship was wrecked, and we weren't on the air anywhere at all. It was a very depressing time. At that point, it would have been very easy to give in. I remember when we got one half an hour of airtime on a, a short boat station broadcasting somewhere in South America. We were delighted, at least we were on the air. Uh, no one, of course, could hear us in Europe, but we were on the air somewhere. And as Seeds also said, as the years have progressed, we've used these RSL licenses to broadcast, I think, 10 times now to the UK. And we've used our skill to make the uh, signal of the transmitter go perhaps rather further than it should have done. But a lot of people, uh, some people were delighted just to be able to hear something of Radio Caroline. And others, of course, said that this was not the thing which a radio station, which was once so mighty and influential, ought to be doing. It was very demeaning. It made ourselves look very small and weak. But of course, it was the only thing that we could do at that time, and it kept us going. Now, similarly, when the opportunity to um, go on the Astro satellite came along, um, once again, people said, well, I suppose that is better, but it's very specialised. No one's going to listen to the satellite. Um, every other independent satellite radio station that's gone on the air seems to have failed. But we've managed to survive for 18 months and I don't see any prospectors of us going off the air soon. And indeed, tonight we're having a uh, broadcast through to midnight, Sunday through to midnight, and Monday we're broadcasting from 6, uh, 6 p.m. to midnight. So now we have presence on air four days a week, and hopefully I'll make it up to seven if things keep improving the way they are. Um, Today also, due to uh, Seeds and his colleagues, we are broadcasting on the internet, which goes all around the world. And although, of course, you can't listen for long periods of time in Europe unless you want to run up a massive phone bill, or perhaps your employer's phone bill, um, in places like America, Australia, New Zealand, calls, local calls are either free, or they have a small fixed charge. So it may be that expatriates in the places I've mentioned can listen to Caroline, no charge for as long as they wish now and I really think that will happen. Um, but the great thing, of course, is this one from 1296 transmitter. I'm an astonished, and perhaps I shouldn't say this too widely, but someone else hasn't started using it. Um, the signal is remarkable, and now anybody who wants to listen in the car or on a portable radio can do so. So as well as establishing our internet transmissions, which are relatively low cost, I think, and the satellite, which of course we we extend our hours as and when we can afford them. Um, the next big step forward, if we can just make it, is to uh, to get on to AM with high power, at least every day, perhaps not 24 hours a day. On Monday, we were on BBC Television, and uh, Tony Blackburn, well-known, now quite old DJ, who started on Caroline, was asked what he thought about, firstly, Caroline and the radio industry generally. And uh, although working for uh, capital, we can't really praise us, and that wouldn't be very sensible. But he did say the problem with radio in the UK, at least, is that it's entirely run by businessmen, and it's entirely run by accountants. And there are focus groups which look at the radio station, and everybody is terrified of their ratings. And if the ratings slip, then the advertising department are furious, and the program controller is going to lose his job. And he said basically that the, the art of the freedom of delivering radio is gone. Uh, but he said, sadly, unless someone's crazy enough to put a ship back in the middle of the ocean, you can't see it ever coming back. Well, our argument is that we can recreate that type of radio. Um, there is no need now to sit in the middle of a hostile ocean so long as we can create the right sound. We still have the ship. Uh, in a few days' time, we'll be connected to ISDN so we can energize the studios. And aside from the fact we'll be in calmer waters, you'll be able to listen to Caroline just the way you always did. Um, we need advertisements, obviously, because the airtime costs us money. We won't be doing this for a particular reason to become incredibly rich. But the music I've heard on the radio this morning, describing from the airport to here, and the style of presentation, and the whole feel of it, that brought everything that Caroline should be doing back to me. And so, uh, although sometimes I get a bit weary and wish I could go and have an easier job, I think <laughs> today's infused me that we are going to get this back on AM every day, somehow or the other and on the satellite full time, and then let the other people network their programs, let the computers run the, the music, uh, let there be nobody in the studio, because the disc jockey recorded his links weeks ago and then went home. But 
when you speak to you know, listen to Radio Caroline, sometimes we'll make mistakes, sometimes we'll say the wrong thing, but there'll always be a human being talking to you and always play music because they enjoy the music. And I think that's the most important thing to maintain. So without having anything to say, <laughs> I've said quite a lot. And um, I hope the rest of the day is very successful. Well, this wraps it up. And, and in, fact, in the end, we ended up, I had a quarter to 12 scheduled to, uh, to give them some space for questioning uh, questions and things. And it is exactly a quarter to 12. So even though the schedule was shoved a little bit, we ended up where we wanted to end up. And if you want to have, uh, if you have questions in general, you can ask them. If you say, well, I'd rather sit down with one or two of you and just have a short chat in private or an interview, all can be arranged. So it's up to you. If you have questions, you say, well, I'd like to, to ask you questions now and here. Feel free to do so. Please, you've got to rather sit down and have an easy talk. Well, that can be arranged as well. Seems to be probably a good idea to have an open question because then other people may have other ideas from, from your answers or our answers. Probably. Yeah. So, any of you dying to ask a certain question? Put your hand in the Absolutely. Put your hand in It looks like I, it's I, full I, of I questions. I have a few questions. Uh, first of all, where do you think in the future you will expect the money from? For one million euros a year, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And the uh, enthusiasts, uh, the NOX have, have put in uh, to Radio Caroline a lot of money through the Radio Caroline uh, club in, uh, in England. Uh, also, the Foundation for Media Communication has uh, given money. But yeah, at one stage, we uh, said to ourselves, well, we stop giving money, but we don't see where the money is going to. So I think a lot of people are a little bit sad that uh, it's not shown to them uh, where the money is used for. Mm -hmm. You want to answer that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fair comment, Hans. Um, I mean, we know that a lot of free radio organizations in the 60s and 70s um, asked for money from supporters and promised great things and then of course just kept the money. Um, and that was a problem we had in the early days of the supporters club, letting people know that um, we really will use the money for the right purpose. Um, if you're saying we don't have, for instance, a set of accounts, you're quite right. If you're interested to know what happens to the money, it's really quite simple. Um, obviously, as you know, no one takes a wage. Um, only in the most extreme circumstances does anybody get paid any expenses. Um, if someone needs to go somewhere and they simply can't afford to go there, it makes sense to cover their costs, otherwise the job won't get done. Um, we have to buy fuel, we have to pay more earnings for the ship. We have to work on the ship to a degree, otherwise it would deteriorate. Um, all the engineering work is carried out by volunteers, they don't get any money either. Any materials we can get for nothing, we get for nothing. Materials we have to buy, well, you know, so we have to buy them. We have to ensure the vessel in case anyone gets injured, so those are the basic running costs for the boat. There are no office costs really. Um, everything else we spend is spent on airtime. The current bill for our airtime, including the hire of the studio, is £2,400 a month, which is so many guilders. 4,000 guilders, come on, team. Um, oh, well, okay. And that is our entire income. Uh, we have 400 supporters, so if you can appreciate, 400 times five is, is £2,000. If you add to that advertisers and individual donations, you can see that we may make it up to £3,000 per month. The airtime costs us uh, two, three, the mooring costs three, the rest is fuel, so really it all goes on that purpose. Now, if you move on to how we can elevate ourselves from 3000 a month to 30000 £40,000 a month, well, obviously that's the big question, but I would say that just as we started on the satellite with, um, I think it was one eight hour experiment, we weren't intending to come back at all. Now we're on there for something like 40, 44 hours a week. And as of tonight and Monday, more hours still. And I really do think I could add Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights and Thursday nights and Friday nights till we're there all the time. Now, whether there's any point in broadcasting on satellite in the middle of the night, it is, unless we use it for training, is another matter. But every hour we add, there's a finite cost to it. 
and every 12 people that join the sports club give us another hour per week on the air. It's as simple as that. Um, we do, when we send our Newsweek magazine, and I remember to do it, just list everything we spent the money on, and you'll find out what comes in and what goes out. <laughs> balance is almost exactly. So anyway, that's, that's my answer. I would like to add one thing to that, because one of the first part of your question was how we think of financing a 12 to 6 on a permanent basis. I started off my story in my my story on this uh, on this press meeting by telling you that we are not telling people that if they become a supporter of Radio Caroline, that will give us the 1296, because it won't. It's not fair to say that if you become a supporter of Radio Caroline, it will make the difference. It will help, but it will not make the difference. It's not fair we're talking a million guilders a year, that's 300,000 pounds a year, and you can't just get it overnight by support. It's not fair to tell them, and we don't. It's just that we want today, we'd like to have as many supporters as we can, because as I said, it helps. But today is uh, to prove a point. Say, hey, we're here, this is what we can do, this is what we sound like, and the only thing we need is to get some sort of a finance basis so that we can cover the first year. And that means if we have a number of, it can be a low number of, substantial advertisers that will just sign an intention that they will advertise with us for a certain amount of money a year for the first year, and there will be one or two people uh, willing to take a risk with their investment. There is a, a, a limited uh, in Dutch Venelschap. It's going to be uh, what do you call that? Created. Yes, sorry. Uh, and people can can participate in that, and they're running risk. All right. But if you listen today, and this is what the point we want to make today, if you listen today to this station, Radio Caroline 1296, it's blowing away every other station. We are louder than 675, we are louder than 1224, we are louder than 1395, and they're all Dutch-based stations. The 8828 is just blown off the face of the earth. And they've got the transmitter in Holland, and we've got a transmitter in the UK, and we're much louder. So this is the point we make. The only thing is, we can have it on a permanent basis, seven days a week, 10 to 11 hours a day. There's no point in having it for a longer time. You get, you get the ground and the sky wave, and the sound will just disappear into Poland and dub Russia after the dusk. So there's no point in more hours, but we can have it for 10 to 11 hours for the next years, if only. I think, I hope that answers your question. As you told us, um, sustaining the Ross revenge does that really cost a lot of money. What do you think is the role of the ship in the future? Is it realistic to, to use it as a permanent base for, for the broadcast? Oh yeah, I mean, we own it in, in, in real terms. So apart from the cost of having it stored somewhere, it's already been paid for. So um, as I said, the cost of storing it is 300 pounds per month which is uh, far less money than you pay to rent an office building. And of course it has studios, it has its library, and it has the right atmosphere. And also it's still fully equipped as a radio station. My idea was, if we can get some more work done, um, it's perfectly possible to take it from place to place, putting on these one month broadcasts that Cecil mentioned, um, to publicize our presence and to say to the listeners in the local area, well, here we are, this is the type of music that we uh, provide. And if you like it so much that you can't do without it, you can still hear us when we move on to another coastal town by tuning to the Astro satellite or whatever channel we're using by that time. But I can't see a Radio Carolyn without the Ross Revenge work, frankly, because what happens in our present studio, which is excellent studio, is that uh, the broadcaster will arrive a short time before their program. They'll do the program, perhaps they'll have a short conversation with the, the previous presenter and then he'll go away. At the end of that person's um, time on the air, the next presenter will come in and perhaps again they'll have time for a few moments conversation. But they don't get together um, socially because they have other jobs. Um, they don't get to discuss music. And of course, and, and until today, they couldn't even hear the program when they're driving in their car. So using the Ross Revenge, keeping it staffed with the broadcasters, means you do get a sense of community 
the monitor speakers are on all the time, the DJs are hearing the music that the other people are playing. Um, and in that environment where you know, it's easy to get to shore than it once was, we tend to be uh, enclosed in an environment where everybody's thinking about music and everybody's thinking about radio. And that's what the ship is for. Um, I don't know if it would sound any different if it was 12 miles from the coast or whether it would sound the way it does in a river. It's important, I think, to create a sense of the broadcasting community and a little bit of isolation from the outside world so they focus on what they're doing. So, obviously, we can't have Radio Caroline with no Ross Revenge, aside from the risks we've all taken to keep it and the vast amount of money we've spent on it. It would be a great shame to waste it now. It deserves, it deserves to be included in whatever we do. As we are getting close to 12 o'clock, um, do we have any moves in the problem? Yes. Uh, what happened to the analog the broadcast of Astra? From Astra? What will happen? Yes? I heard it will be stopped by the end of the year. Uh, well, our service is provided by Flextech Television. Um, and they've told me that we're secure until at least July of the year 2001. The other thing they said, of course, is that if the satellite, if a commercial purpose, whatever it may be, can be found for the satellite, even if the other channels deliver communication or data, if they can get a profit out of the satellite channels, they'll keep it going. So it may not be July 2001. We may have more time on there. But of course, Flextech also have uh, digital output too. And recently they purchased Ellie West, which is the biggest uh, cable operator in the UK. The UK is not as cabled up as, uh, as the Netherlands, but uh, they have access to the cable as well. The digital is very, is very cheap, I heard. It is. Uh, would that we could afford both, but we can't afford both at the moment, it's one or the other. So we'll stay on the analog as so long as we have an audience, mm -hmm. and then we'll provide to FlexTech to see if they'll move us. But, as I say, if we could get a seven-day-a-week presence on the uh, on the satellite, I'm sure we could go to Telewest Cable, which then puts us right into the UK. To, yes, to people's hands. Yes, you're listening, so you go on this call, Well, I'm going to give them plenty of notice. I mean, I think the Radio Caroline people are enthusiastic enough to, to, to chase around until they find it. But presently, to answer your question, we're, we're secure until next July, we're sure. Mm -hmm. uh, probably longer than that. Okay. Hans, uh, another question? Another question is, uh, well, it's now on the internet, uh, a few hours a week, uh, present the programs. Is there any plan in the future to go partly in touch or not? No. no. Radio Caroline is a UK-based station is a UK station, which will not mean that there will, no, will be no Dutch language programs whatsoever, because <laughs> never is a, is a very long time. But basically, it's pan-European, and we say it's an English station, and it will remain that way. But the, the reason why I ask this question is that uh, in the past, uh, uh, the other radio stations uh, from international waters were partly Dutch, and if you uh, they moved back uh, uh, to commercials play on those stations that there were more advertisers uh, from the Benelux than from England, far more. Yeah. One of the things is with 1296, if we can get the frequency for long term, uh, and even for today, as you probably noticed listening to it, the advertisers come from the Benelux, mainly, you, uh, mainly uh, Holland, and there's a one Horizon Associates from, uh, from the UK. And this is, uh, but I think we, we've been, um, well, globalizing is not the real word. European community feeling is, is more like uh, the borders are just sort of fading. And I think if, if you have a station like Radio Caroline that's broadcasting towards several various countries in the EC, in Western Europe, and you are a businessman and you want to advertise your your merchandise. Well, if it is a Dutch language station and you have a Dutch market, that's why you put your advert on. But now you've got a pan European station, and if more than Holland, but a part of Europe is your market, well, then you put your, your ad on there. All right, it is 12 o'clock. Uh, we promised everyone that they could get on the ship at 12. So if you have any more questions, please approach us.
and we'll sit down in a quiet corner and we'll answer every question you have. Thank you very much for attending this meeting. Okay.